Okay, 8.2 transformations of logarithmic functions. So I'm going to do a review. Y equals AF. So this F right now will be the logarithmic function with a base. So whatever that base is, okay, the base is not, the base is not a transformation. A base is just part of the original graph. Okay, we kind of did the same thing when we talked about exponential functions because that base, like the original function already takes into account that base, whether it be, for example, 2 to the x or 3 to the x, so on. Okay, our original function and our original table of values already takes that into account. Okay, kx minus d plus c. And again, this is our mapping notation. We take the 1 over the k, multiply it by x, add the d value, and then ay plus c. Okay, as a review, a, just the a, is a vertical stretch or compression by a factor of a, whatever number that is. If a is less than zero, aka, if it is negative, there is also a reflection in the x-axis. That is why we have the absolute value symbols here. Now, 1 over k, just the number, so just like the absolute value of 1 over k. Horizontal stretch or compression by a factor of 1 over k. But if k is negative, there's also a reflection in the y-axis. Okay. D is a horizontal translation left or right. Okay, And just remember, and I'll just write out one, if it looks negative, it goes to the right. If it looks positive, it goes to the left. But that's looks. Okay, because remember, there's that built-in negative sign. Okay, remember that. Remember the built-in negative sign. Because what that does is the built-in negative sign makes the positive a negative and the negative a positive. Right, it flips that sign. And C is a vertical translation up or down. Okay, so I want to talk specifically about the vertical asymptote. So in a logarithmic function, we know that the original vertical asymptote is at x equals 0, and the logarithmic function looks like this. So our new vertical asymptote is going to, like this asymptote is going to change whether we go to the right or to the left. Okay, so if there's a horizontal translation D applied, our vertical asymptote changes. Okay, the other thing is if there's a reflection in the y axis, so this is the y axis, of course, if there's a reflection here, the vertical asymptote doesn't actually change, but what happens is like the negative k is applied. This is, this is going to affect our domain. Okay, so because instead of like going to the right and being greater than, we're going to go to the left and be less than. Okay, so this is going to affect the domain. So the domain is going to be whatever the vertical asymptote is to infinity, right? If there's no reflection. So obviously vertical asymptote is zero, this would be zero to infinity. Now, if there is a reflection, it's going to be negative infinity to that number zero or that d value. That's how that changes that. So this is a rule of thumb. And the range is always up and down forever. So negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so example one. Write the equation that models each of the following descriptions. Then write the mapping notation that you would use to graph it. Okay, so A, the logarithmic function. So this is our function. The 10 is not a transformation. The 10 is part of the base function. So this function has been vertically compressed by a factor of 2 over 3. So we're going to have 2 over 3 log 
base 10. And then I'm going to pause for a second. Horizontally stretch by a factor of 4. So this is going to be 1 quarter x. Okay, reflected in the y-axis, so it's negative 1 quarter x. And the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. So what that means is it went left 2 units. Okay, so in brackets with the x, it's x plus 2. Okay, our mapping, we will map x, y onto, so everything around the x affects the x. So instead of negative 1 over 4, we're going to have negative 4 because this is a stretch, right? It's actually what's going on. So reflection, stretch, and then this is a, sorry, this is an x. And then this is going to the left 2, so minus 2. And the y is going to be affected by taking two-thirds of each y. So 2 over 3y. And then this is the mapping notation. So an exponential function with a base of 4. So when I think this, I think of the exponential function y equals 4 to the x. Okay? And remember, this 4, because it's the base, does not is not a transformation. It doesn't affect the transformations, it is already taken into account in the original. Okay, so has been vertically stretched by a factor of 2, so 2 times 4 to some exponent. Okay, translated 7 units to the right, so that's going to be x to the right is minus 7, because it's opposite, and 1 unit down. Okay, if this is the number with the x on it, on the exponent, that is the base. Okay, so x comma y, we are going to have, remember, this is, not a, this is not a transformation. So everything affecting the x's is around the x. So this is x plus 7. It's moving to the right 7 units. Then on the y, we're going to have 2y minus 1. Okay. See, the logarithmic function y equals log base 10x, and remember, this base 10 is not a transformation. Okay, has been vertically stretched by a factor of 6, so y equals, we're going to have 6 times log base 10x, reflected in the x-axis, which is going to be, so negative 6, and translated 8 units up, so plus 8. So, our mapping notation, nothing is beside the x. Not multiplied, not added or subtracted, so our x actually stays status quo. And remember, this front number and the back number affect the y. So negative 6y plus 8. Okay, example two, use transformations to sketch this function. y equals negative 2 log base 10 x minus 4. So, as a reminder, the parent function would actually be uh, y equals log base 10. And this is not a transformation. This is the original graph. So, when we are dealing with log base 10, we could, like if you guys uh, memorize the first three numbers, one tenth, one and ten. What would happen is we can actually put those three numbers into our calculator. The log button on your calculator, your calculator will say likely log or log x. Mine just says log. But what this actually means in your calculator is specifically log base 10. If it's not log base 10, we can't put it in. Okay. But here are the three um, coordinates that we're going to use. So 1 tenth and negative 1, which is going to be here, 1 and 0, and 10 and 1. Okay, then we're going to have a vertical asymptote right here. 
and this is at x equals 0. Okay, so this is the original. And by the way, it it goes up and up and up, which is gradually, very, very slowly, but forever. Okay, so this is y equals log base 10 x. Now, let's talk about the, um, the mapping notation. So, we see that this function um, has x minus 4 in the bracket. So, the transformation that is applied to the x is going to be um, write four units. So we're going to do x plus 4. And the transformation that's applied to the y coordinate is negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2y multiplied. Okay? So let's sub in 1 over 10 to the x. Okay? So 1 over 10 plus 4 is going to be like a 4.1. Let's go all the way down the x's. Okay, sub in the 1. 1 plus 4, we get 5. Sub in the 10. 10 plus 4, we get 14. Okay, this is the other thing. So our vertical asymptote, it was 0. See how this is an x? We also have to sub that into the x. So 0 plus 4. Our new vertical asymptote is going to be 4. So this is going to be our new vertical asymptote because it's moved to the right 4 units. Okay, so negative 2y. So let's take these y values and sub in to the y. So negative 2 times negative 1, we get 2. Negative 2 times 0, we get 0. And negative 2 times 1, we get negative 2. And now all we have to do is graph this. So 4.1 and 2, 5 and 0, and 14 and negative 2. Okay. So we can clearly see the reflection there. Okay, we can also see a stretch because we're looking at these twos, right? You can see that stretch as well. And we can see that everything is on the right-hand side of this vertical asymptote. Okay, this kind of goes back to that domain that we see on like the previous slide. If there's a reflection, then it would be on the left side of the vertical asymptote, but there's no reflection in the y-axis. This is just an aside. So the domain is going to be x is greater than 4, which is our d value, our left-right value, or our vertical asymptote. Example 3, use transformations to sketch this function. y equals 3, log base 10, x plus 5 plus 2. Okay, so again, this 10 is not a transformation. That is part of the parent function. Okay, so this is already taken into account when we graph these uh, initial, like, three values from our parent function. So our vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 0. Okay, I'll just graph the original. Okay, so we're going to go 1 tenth and negative 1, 1 and 0, and 10 and 1, which is going to be way over here. Okay, so the question doesn't actually call for us to graph the original, but I just wanted to throw it in there just so we, we continuously get an appreciation of what the log function looks like. Okay, now let's do the mapping notation for the transform function. The Transformation that's attached to the x is just left 5. Okay, x plus 5. So it's going to be x minus 5 since we're going left 5. And the transformations that are applied to the y are 3 and then a plus 2. So 3y plus 2. So what is, this is essentially 0 0.1. 0 0.1 minus 5 we get negative 
let's go down the x's, all the x values. 1 minus 5, we get negative 4. And 10 minus 5, we get 5. Oops, yeah, 5. Okay. Now let's put these three values into the 3, y plus 2. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus 2, I get negative 1. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2, I get 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2, I get 5. Okay? And the vertical asymptote is an x equals, therefore, sub it into the x value. Our new vertical asymptote is negative 5, which is going to occur here. This was x equals 0. Okay, so negative 4.9, negative 1, negative 4 and 2, that's a big stretch, okay, and 5 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so y equals 3 log base 10, x plus 5 plus 2.